Karen Rado. I'm a Celtic artist. Go ahead and grab that. And um, I have uh, discovered a system of tracing, twisting, bending lines with a stylus that is very calming for the brain. I put out a whole bunch of different designs, some that are very simple and easy, some that are very complex. Your brain will go right where it is interested. It always does. My sister works with challenged children. She will put out the, the plates as though she's dealing cards out of a deck, and the children will always grab the ones that they want. Uh, grab a plate, take your stick, and it's quite simple. Start tracing the twisting lines on the design with the stick. And by the way, you know this is a gold stick, right? Ah! Aha! Uh -huh. did not know that. One of my best designs with high-functioning autism because eight-year-old boys will trace a wolf because it looks cool. And, and then they start using it. Eight-year-old boy mode. Just trace. Honestly, this is the simplest activity. Okay. Find a place on the plate and just begin to trace the line of the design with the stylus. On the design you're doing there, which is the blue trinity, now try the twisting blue line that runs around the outside. Some of my designs are made up of single and broken lines. Some of my designs are made up of multiple lines. You feel that little shift in your focus as you start concentrating? And that absence of a response is usually a yes. <laughs> I'm concentrating. Well, right, and this is what has been described to me. When you follow the lines of a twisting Celtic knot, and I'll hold one up. Let me hold one up, that's a little easier to see from a distance. This begins to work the brain across midline. I have had three neuroscientists describe to me in detail the brain mapping that goes on while people are tracing. You're working across midline, you're calming the corpus callosum, and you are centering all activity in the medial frontal cortex. This creates a light little hypnosis of, of, of state of mindfulness. It does it almost every time. I'm saying like 99.9% .9 of the time I see people go right in. The point of ones are the ones that are skeptical and don't want to give this a chance and they have all their resistance up on high and they don't want to relax into it. But when I can talk them through and get them to relax into the moment and let their guard down, they go right in. Everybody switch to your other hand. Ooh, awesome. Yeah, right. Wait a minute. This is always the response that I get. Well, I, Patty and I were talking because I'm going to be um, teaching a little seminar thing on Saturday about, and the title, not, I didn't come up with this, but it's great, Confessions of a Control Freak. So I wanted to employ some um, art therapy that would involve dealing with kind of control issues. I can well, a great you. way of doing that yeah. would be to have them draw with the non-dominant hand where they have less control of what they're doing. I have worked with that exact yeah. same kind of condition. I work with these conditions at Renaissance fairs for about two minutes with people. Uh -huh. As I'm trying to offer my product for sale, this is how I have been making my living. And you get that total, I like to describe it as usually it's a female who cannot let control of her universe slip because the universe will fall apart and it will be all her fault. Right. And of course that leads to tight body language, it leads to panic attacks, it leads to severe anxiety mm -hmm. because they can't let go otherwise what will the family do without them or what will my job do without me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you put the stick in the other hand, uh, notice by the way how easy this is, so effortless with your other hand. This is simple muscle mechanics. You aren't drawing you are tracing. Notice how the fingers do not flex. If you feel it, you'll notice it's your shoulder that's pushing and pulling your arm. This is not a fine motor skill. This is a gross motor skill. Because of that, it does not require fine dexterity. It does, however, change the neurological processing and it confuses the brain a tiny minute. There is that wonderful golden moment for any therapist when you confuse a patient because that, I can't do this, why am I doing this? Why is this happening? I can't do this it stops dead when you give the brain something weird to do. They just say, what? And then there's that dead pause. Trace with the other hand. I can't do that, is almost always the response. Yes, you can, try it. No, no, seriously, I can't. I'm, 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 I'm stupid with the sand. I can't, I, I hear this all the time. Try it, and I, I gentle them into that. Then they find that they can do it. Then they're genuinely confused. The brain goes into that quietus, it stays there, and switch back to your dominant hand, you'll notice that there's that gentle carryover of that quietus back to the dominant hand activity. 
where when you first started this, you might have been doing that same thing silently, questioning why am I doing this, what's supposed to happen. Notice how everyone is just gliding with the ease and flow. That's what I look for in an arm motion. When the hand is gliding, the neck is relaxed, the shoulder is relaxed, the entire arm is relaxed, and the brain is in that zone where they are just mindful. Also, you have isolated tactile and visual on a pinpoint. Notice how you are really listening. Because the ears become dominant when you isolate visual and tactile. And so, when we're dealing with erratic processing, autism, ADHD, you've taken away two of the major stimuli, tactile and visual. Well, guess what? The brain calms down and they start listening. I've seen very low-functioning children go from playing with a toy where nothing is touching them to tracing and nodding in real time to questions that their parents ask them. Uh, I have uh, had some people start to trace. Their anxiety level is so high and so near the surface that like, am I supposed to be crying when I'm doing this? I'm not going to cry. They hit release because they feel completely sound and completely safe. Sometimes I will guide them on a small visualization because visualization cues enter seamlessly into tracing potato. How many people saw it? Right there in your brain, potato. the potato, if you were listening to me. I just entered a non sequitur. You saw it right there, didn't you? Right. I offered a non sequitur into my lecture. You were kind of in your own zone, so you may not have been listening at all, uh -huh. but she saw the potato right there. Visualization cues enter seamlessly into this environment. You can use this as a wonderful focus to guide a patient through a visualization exercise because their resistance begins to stop and they start visualizing. For example, when I'm working with veterans, and I have, and my work is at the Denver VA and it's at Luke Air Force Base, that's why I have my eagle, which is part of my military collection, just going for the symbols associated. Um, I will always have them focus on safety and soundness. They're at a renaissance fair. Children are screaming, sounds like an incoming missile, balloons are popping, Pop, pop, pop is not a sound that a returning vet from Afghanistan really is comfortable hearing. And yet, I've seen them begin to trace, and I will guide them through visualizations, their whole body begins to relax. And I have noticed some vets, when they hear a pop, they're up and acquiring, and then I guide them back down into this activity. The longer they stay with it, the shorter that acquisition time, and the less intense is their glance. When it, when it first starts, I mean, you know, <laughs> they're on guard, but the more they get into this. So I have just seen so many applications. I've also seen physical therapy applications. This design is my Celtic Curls. This is a nice, soft, flowing design. I worked with some people with tremor disorders. They could not hold the stick. This one gentleman programmed multi-million dollar systems for IBM. Forget it, he couldn't hold the stick. The tremors were so bad. I had him begin to trace. When I have someone trace, may I borrow my Trinity knot back? I always have people use the center finger. This is ergonomic. When you point, you add stress along the forearm. When you have someone trace with just the hand, and by the way, this design here is the Trinity for Father, Son, Holy Spirit. It's a classic Celtic design. It's a compulsory maneuver if you're an Irish artist. When I have them, <laughs> when I have them trace this, this is very hypnotic. This is a simple repetitive motion exercise. Every single hypnotherapist who's come into my booth has gotten that one in two seconds and you can easily guide them into a visualization exercise. What I was saying about tremor disorders, on this design, it's also open and flowing, but there's just a little bit more of a curl. And because the shoulder goes into a neutral position as it gently moves the arm about, I've had people with neck and shoulder injuries respond to this as a physical therapy tool. Excuse me, I'm losing a little thingy off my necklace there. Oh. I've also seen that tremor disorder in about seven minutes relax just a tiny little bit. I do not know why, but I've seen it happen repeatedly. I had one woman with MS by this design. She traced it for 30, excuse me, three hours her first night. She said it felt like 10 minutes had elapsed and she felt so balanced she didn't either take her psychotropics the next day because they make her drowsy. She came back and, and spent two hours in my booth selling my product for me because she just couldn't believe it. But what that tells me, when I see that tremor disorder relax, and I've seen it happen before my eyes about five times now, um, there must be something affecting in the brain that's calming that 
tick down that's calming that tremor disorder down. I don't know what. I don't have MRI behind me. I don't have EEG resources behind me. Respect. Um, oh, yeah. I, I, yeah. I'm an artist. What do I know about this? This is how I discovered this system. I would uh, draw, I draw everything, I hand draw. And I would trace my designs sometimes to see if they flowed where I wanted them to. And that's when I felt that little shift in focus. And I thought that that was, whoa, that was really trippy. Okay, what caused that? So the more I traced, the more I got into that little shift in cognitive function. So I started making meditation plates. The first time, if I can borrow my wolf design just to show it up for the camera, a gentleman comes right up to me at the Renaissance Fair. Renaissance festivals and art fairs are a natural fit for my product. People come and they see the Celtic art and they come in my booth. It's, it's easy for me to make a sale. Gentleman comes right up and says, my wife sent me here to see you. My son has Asperger's syndrome and we bought him this wolf and he sat for four hours in his room and just traced and traced. And he looks me right in the eye and says, you may not believe this, but you've helped my son. And I had no idea what to say. I said, thank you. And the wife wanted him to buy some more designs. And in the back of my head, as I'm tendering the sale, I'm like, what's Asperger's? <laughs> <laughs> Well, That's awesome. let's, let's look it up, shall we? And so I began to, and I always say the true remark of science is not, Eureka, I've discovered this. It's, why did that happen? And can I make that happen again? So if it, it tends to reason if it worked with one child with autism, dot, 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 let's see if it can do it again. And so I said, as responsibly as I felt I could, sometimes this helps with autism. I didn't say the one time, I said sometimes. Well, sure enough, more special needs parents started emailing me after shows and saying, oh my God, this is amazing. And he has autism. What the parent would say as the child is just engrossed. I have seen kids pick up the stylus without any cue whatsoever and just start tracing and stay that way for five minutes, then 10 minutes, then 15 minutes. The parent wants to go on and enjoy the rest of the show. The child is just engrossed in this. And they start looking at me like, okay, how did you do that? Seriously. But they just are so in tune to the visual and the tactile um, uh, mm -hmm. stimuli that it's a natural for them. Um, higher functioning designs, I found medium designs like this one, or can I borrow that uh, five stars that I handed over to you? This I actually also designed for my military collection. The five stars are Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and Coast Guard. But boys enjoy angular designs as opposed to my curls, which I like for um, uh, uh, high-functioning girls. Uh, these are a little bit more feminine, slightly more masculine in the design. And combined with my wolf, these are my three best ones for not only high-functioning, but I've also found ADD will just go right in with a little bit of stimuli. What I've found with lower-functioning autism, more complex designs are a little bit of a better match. This is a very complex design. One of my favorite stories is this design, my hearts, has 45 little hearts hidden in the pattern. Wow. Little tiny child, three and a half, which is young for fine motor skills, let alone tracking. Half an hour on this plate. We put it on a little stool so she could reach it, this tiny, tiny little child. And mom comes over and says, well, you know, she's on the autism spectrum. And I said, well, no, I didn't know that. But given the fact that she's been in my booth tracing for the last half an hour, not stopping, I'm not exactly surprised to hear that. So um, I Question. think, yes, go ahead. And for, for the autists, now I just want to underline for everybody who's listening to the video and for you guys here, that one of the things Erin wants to do is develop a research base. She wants to develop a database. She wants to be able to verify these things. Because so far, these are just clinical anecdotes That's from right. parents and therapists. Mm -hmm. But what kind of anecdotes have you heard from parents who've used these with their autistic kids? So it's great that their attention is focused for a little while, maybe you can get the dishes washed, I don't know. But what about the change in the child afterwards? There's a carryover. I, I don't have any anecdotes on how this performs on the child over a long period of time. But when the parent needs to manage the moment is when that these are so easily deployed and the most useful. And they'll have the child trace. Um, my one friend, her son was speech delayed, now he's testing on the autism spectrum now that he's a little older. She would set him in her lap at two and a half and they'd both use the stick. She, he'd hold it down here and then she'd hold it up a little higher and guide him. And it calmed him right down. Now that he's older, he knows how to use these things and she has a small collection of them. He'll go get one. 
his television show is playing in the background, he'll completely ignore it and absolutely trace and say, Mommy, blue. Mommy, curl, or something like that. And there's a really nice carryover into that, that quietus. When so the child's using it as a self-soothing mechanism absolutely. to help him mo modulate his affect. Absolutely. Uh, one uh, parent uh, bought a plate for the child at the Renaissance Festival. The, the young boy's about, I want to say about 12. And I think he's testing slightly lower on the spectrum. Mom didn't identify where he was on the spectrum. They buy a plate, they go into the show. She comes back at 5 p.m. and says, oh my God, I don't know how to thank you. He was going to go into meltdown three times today. And he did what you told him. He took his plate and he traced it. And every single time he backed himself away from meltdown, quiet as his brain. And we were able to enjoy a full day at a busy venue because he could self-medicate. He could self-regulate. Can I ask you something? I have a question. Sure. Have you found that certain designs are particularly effective with, say, anxiety, depression, you know, how, how do these kind of, I know you said you use this with the eight-year-old Absolutely. Boys. Open flowing designs, and these are my two best. This is my curls, this is my trinity. This one actually has a soft flowing, it has a waltz tempo, which is another reason why it's my best one for OCD. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Tick, tick, tock, tick, tick, tock, tick. Very, very hypnotizing because of the even tempo. Also with OCD, they can count that one, two, three, feel that sense of regulation that they need in order to feel safe and secure. The, um, the Trinity has more of a wave-like feel, flowing side to side and curling it up and over. And these two designs, by far, have been my best one with panic, with anxiety. I can't speak to depression because I haven't had people who are depressed say, oh, I feel so much better now. Okay. But I but I have okay. seen that catharsis, that release from severe anxiety, sometimes on their own, sometimes after a little guided visualization. I've seen that repeatedly. Um, they asked me about bipolar. Well, <laughs> I'm bipolar. That's where the art comes from. And sometimes when I'm on my down, I don't want to do anything, and I need a, just you know a little chemical assistance to help me get through that moment. I but when they're on their manic, oh yeah, this can help calm down very nicely. But um, they've been so incredibly effective with anxiety disorders. And then I found again the medium intensity designs, the medium complexity, the wolf, the curls, the stars, high functioning autism, ADHD, or some people who just need a little bit of challenge. The the flowing ones are not very challenging. People who are highly intelligent need complex designs. They get bored otherwise. Um, but people who are under, undergoing a lot of anxiety, they need to calm down. And that's where this is a very good decompression tool. And then people who have critically thinking minds and very busy minds, that's where the tight complex designs come in. They're very engaging. They're very intriguing. I also have a swords design and a dragonflies design. Very, very intense designs. So people who think a lot, and engineers love this design because it's very mathematical and very logical and very geometric. Anytime, I, and gifted kids, the highly precocious boys, I love watching them at a table at a show because they're like very sarcastic at four years old because they're that smart. They'll dive into some of the complex designs and just stay there. And you see the parents go, oh, thank God, I can take five minutes. But it's just a very good tool that way. So when you have that critically thinking child or adult that needs to capture their brain into something in order to manage the moment of their day. This is a very good tool. These, by the way, I make them out of a laminated art print, so they're scratch resistant. They're a hard plastic. They're very indestructible. Um, they could be thrown across the room and still look perfectly fine. But that's uh, a handy to special needs educators. Um, to uh, also speak to your question, I had one uh, special needs educator with 10 low-functioning children in the classroom. And low-functioning kids are not stupid. They know when they can use their disability not to get any work done today. So she brought these in, and all the children wanted to do was trace and trace and trace. So she used it as reinforcement. All right, if you finish these five questions for me, I'll let you go get a plate. Change the dynamic of her classroom in a day, comes back and says, oh, dear God, I love these things. So it's just the simplest tool. Two of the nicest compliments I received, I was just showing at the National Occupational Therapist Conference in San Diego. And an, and an OT comes over and says, this is so primal. This is just so simple. And then another show, um, I think it was National School Board, a doctor came over and identified himself as on the clinical trials for Paxil. 
He looks at my table, gets it in a second. He, he just had this expression like, damn it. She's not even synthesizing chemicals. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he was thinking, but it sure looked like that to me. Tell me about this one. This is my Lotus design. This is also a medium intensity design. And so theoretically, it fits in with the high functioning autism. It's just that I, I don't see a lot of uh, autistic or ADAD pick this up. This is a nice design, has a little bit of intensity, a little bit of geometry. Uh, school teachers, for example, people who think methodically, think logically, but they're not completely anal retentive. That's that design. It has this nice, easy geometry to it. And um, again, it's one of those medium complexity patterns. And oh, oh, uh, one other uh, point. I've had some vertigos respond to this pattern and to one, one of my other patterns. And they, I think it's because this one has angles that make you stop. Let me hold it so I can get it better. Here's an angle. Here's an angle. Here's an angle. And I think the little stops and little starts change up the way the brain is processing. But I've had a couple of people with vertigo. I don't know what is causing it. I don't know if it's a persistent problem in the brain. I have had people with stress-induced vertigo. And they said, why did my head stop spinning? I said, well, what's your trigger? As with a migraine, stress. I think I can speak to that. <laughs> because there's a physiological change that happens in the body when the brain is in that quietus. Everything calms down. People have sworn that their blood pressure has dropped. They've sworn that their heart rates have dropped. One of, yeah, one of my favorite psychosomatic responses, they swear I put magnets. They feel their hand is being pulled. It's a wooden stick in a plastic plate. It's a completely psychosomatic response. It cracks me up. It happens all the time. You, you put a magnet in this, didn't you? No. That's your brain. No. It can't be. Yes, I can. <laughs> and so I just know I'm affecting certain things. I also think I'm staying, uh, I'm moving out of alpha waves and moving the brain into theta. I, EEG would back me up on that. I just don't happen to have an EEG machine. Um, and I do think that when we can do some functional MRIs, we're just going to see the front of the brain line up. EMDR, if you know that modality, uh, uh, has been shown to grow the hippocampus on, in MRI testing. It tends to reason that if one visual tracing therapy can grow one part of the brain, this has the potential to mature another part of the brain. A study would back it up, but it has the potential to do that, I believe. And every EMDR therapist, and by the way, at the National EMDR conference, I sold about $4,500 worth of product in three days, and that was on very short half an hour breaks. By the end of the show, I had these little piranha feeding frenzies at my wow. table, and they just wow. went, I want these four, I want these six, I want eight of them. And they got it. Um, also, EMDR helps to recreate REM in a conscious mind. I think I'm doing that here in a slightly more languid sense. But when you're in REM, or when you're in that shift, you can begin to process through. This is such a good tool for anxiety, because you can even get a patient to visualize their trigger, but it has no power over them while they're tracing. I was working with a Vietnam vet, and he's tracing, and he said, yeah, but they're still coming over the wall. And I immediately said, yeah, but they're on a treadmill and they're tripping. And he stopped tracing for a second. And I saw that flash in his eyes like, wait, that was funny. If he can make his monster funny, the monster loses its power. Then he can interrupt the panic before it takes over. And if you can interrupt a panic, you can manage a panic. I've also had some circumstances where I've taught people how to trace and then put the plate away and visualize in vivid detail the tracing. They get themselves right into the same place, so when they're boarding the plane and they don't have the plate to trace, they can stop, uh, visualize, and recreate the quietus and manage the panic before it takes over the brain, moving the brain into mindfulness. Also with stress test takers. Uh, this is one of my favorite jokes at... <laughs> I'll take my yeah, right. yeah, Let's let's go. <laughs> this, is, this is a lead up to one of my favorite jokes. I will tell a parent. Uh, I'll, I I always talk with kids right on their own level. Usually I'm sitting down and bang, I'm on eye level with them. You ever do you ever have any trouble taking a test? And I'm like, oh, he does. Okay, do this. You trace. You study your stuff. You trace. You study your stuff. On test day, picture the plate and all of that stuff will be right with you. And I will tell the parent that's called associated learning. And then my favorite joke is, does that ring a bell with anybody? It's also called state-dependent learning. There we go. I did so not know that. So getting yourself into a relaxed state, yeah. 
and, and it's conditional. It's, okay. it's classic condition. condition. It's classic conditioning. Classic psych 100. So you're associating the relaxation feeling with the conditions, with the stimulus, with the condition response, which is the relaxation, with the content of and the absorption of data. Yep. Yeah. And the repetition of data under performance conditions. And I was at the Association of Educational Therapists when I was listening to them talk about if you can interrupt the performance anxiety, a child can perform. That's the same thing as interrupting a panic and helping a person through a moment before the panic attack sets in. This is the simplest thing, and it has the neatest effect. I've had uh, oncologists want this in the chemo ward. I would love to get these into, I have a fireman who's got two of these on the truck. So when he responds to a condition where there's shock, he has a person trace for a minute and he can get more accurate data about what happened in this accident. The, applica the applications are just so vast with this simple, simple little thing. And my favorite, the second favorite joke is I make neurology look good. Awesome. <laughs> 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 And like the hokey pokey, that's what it's all about. Oh, I oh and one, if I may, I forgot to mention this. Uh, one hand, other hand, one hand, other hand, neuroplasticity. I know that these will have benefit with traumatic brain injury. And you mentioned a technique also with stroke victims, which it's was... It's just that technique. I've had people do with it, strokes so just say, trace with one hand, trace with the other hand, do it for a little while, do it for a little while. And I've had people get back to me when they purchased it for their mom or they purchased it for themselves. They felt a difference in doing that over time mm -hmm. and also when there's been like blunt force trauma and part of the brain has been damaged because of course the brain is trying to reconnect or bypass mm -hmm. the damaged pathways I think that this will have benefit uh, and then Alzheimer's it has the potential to work into that using the offhand theory mm -hmm. it's just it's just that simple um, when I'm dealing with brain diminishment, neurological diminishment, that's where I like to work progressively. I'll start them on a simple design and then see if I can work them up to something more complex. When I'm dealing with behavioral, no, let their brain figure out where they want to be. Don't challenge them. You're trying to decompress them and, and release the trauma. That's a good. That's a good distinction. Yeah, but when it's but when it's um, trying to rebuild as a therapy, trying to work progressively, start with some. I'll, I'll always okay. You had a stroke. How long ago was it? that tells me where a patient is neurologically and that I can make a suggestion accordingly. Perfect. So, forget about TBI, because that's kind of important. Yes. I mean, the applications, you know, mm -hmm. from traumatic brain injury, from being on the psych ward to being on the chemo ward to trauma, I would love to see every kid who has to go in for surgery get one of these things in every single children's hospital. And these have no language barrier. They come packaged nicely with a little insert. Just translate the insert into French or Spanish. You're ready to rock and roll. There's well, a, like you said, you, you've seen two, three, and four-year-olds just pick up the thing and start tracing. Nobody had to give them instructions. They just that's right. The two-year-olds don't have the fine motor skills, so they try and track and they end up scratching. That's fine. That's why they're laminated. But three and a half is where the tracking skills begin. And I will see the really smart ones, and they're on complex designs, like my hearts. And they're tracking it, and they're staying with the pattern. And by the way, because you're wearing it, and because I've been asked for it so much, here's my Star of yes, David. Yes, I bought the Star of David because I have a dad affinity for Stars of David, which I would just say for the purpose of the videotape is a medium design because it has both tight curls and those loose curls. And I designed it that way on purpose because the Turo Autism Center in Henderson, Nevada has been toying around with whether they want to do anything with this. Well, they are a Jewish management base. And so not only were, was one of their directors going, Mazel tov, this is the most beautiful thing. She asked me to uh, come and talk to the Jewish veterans of America in her local area in Las Vegas. Because again, I've had such good results working with vets. And the way I describe it to a vet is this is simply a tool. When the anxiety hits, when the panic hits, when the moments are there, deploy the tool. There are no performance evaluations and then it becomes non-threatening, then they'll use it, then they get the brain into that mindful state where they start to process through. And if they can do that with the help of a therapist guiding them through management visuals, even better. Um, but there's such benefit. I'd like to see these in every first responder's office. You know, when a paramedic loses a, a patient or when a, a policeman has to shoot somebody, they need to decompress from that moment. They're in shock, for heaven's sakes. I'd like to see these in active theaters of combat we, we don't decompress our men and women when they go out. 
And we all know that the brain is not designed to handle prolonged periods of stress. It's a fight or flight, out of there, boom, or in, save a buddy, gone, boom, let's, let's get quiet now, let's mellow out. And we're not putting them through those conditions, we're asking them to sustain long periods of stress. I really think that this has application in order to help them decompress. What's been occurring to me as I'm using it in the office, the way I think about it psychologically, is we have a lot of things that we do in psychology that is um, about whether we realize it or not, is encouraging mindfulness. Okay? It's encouraging that meditative state. Without realizing it, you know, a lot of a lot of, of our Christian evangelical Christian clients would get kind of all weak down. Oh, is it hypnosis? And you know, my, you know, blah 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 blah. And so it might be helpful to, to explain to them tr trances are a natural thing that our body, that our brain does, mm -hmm. and that there's many different um, kinds of trances and levels of trance. But it's something that we do, and in some ways, the therapy session is a trance state. Um, and we even use our voice. We know that we use our voice sometimes hypnotically, subjectively, to talk, to, to get under some of the conscious defenses and get, a, and, and, and get around some of the feelings that are in the way. And, but the thing is that tradition, up till now, I found it very hard to teach people how to get into that meditative, mindfulness, relaxed state. I've done my progressive relaxation recording and people can listen to it and download it. That's the closest thing I've gotten to having them something that they can take home, which is my voice, you know, guiding them through the visualization. But in experimenting in the office, within one repetition of the pattern, every single one of my clients in the last two weeks has immediately had a relaxed response, including my very anxious ADD guy who's popping all over the place. And I'm like, wow, this is magic. Because it doesn't, I, I don't have to teach it. And, no. the, and the person, and I've had four it's clients eight. already say, where can I get one of these? And here's what I'm thinking. When you have overly stimulated clients, PTSD, anxiety, whatever, they have trouble with affect management. They don't have, they haven't learned yet those things inside their brain to help them manage their feelings. Nor they, do they have time to. Right. Nor do they take time to. Right. Or can they center enough to, you know, right. or what, what, you know, we, we have taught you guys to do the 911 card. Sometimes they forget their 911 card. Or what is it that I can do when I'm anxious? What I noticed in the office is this doesn't take any training. And, no. and they, there's a relaxation response within 60 seconds. 20 oh. sometimes. Yeah. I've seen and, it 15 And to within 20. one repetition of the pattern, the person's going, this is great. Where, where, where can I do this? I feel so calm. And so it was, it's been, it's so simple. Wait it's until just, you get a patient start crying on you in, in 40 seconds. If I may give you one anecdote, I show at Renaissance Fairs, and of course I'm about ready to head out to Colorado for the Colorado Ren Fair. Last, the, last year, we, the second to last weekend, we had a 14-year-old boy who was in the Aurora Theater shooting. He responded to this design, which is, again, my, one of my best friends for anxiety, immediately. He stayed with it for quite some time before they went out to enjoy the rest of the show. He came back with his mom the next weekend and said this is the only thing that had been able to help him calm down the entire week. And that's what I'm looking for to use it for. I have some people who I'm working with in EMDR, and they need something in between session, especially because EMDR kind of stirs up the pot. And uh, that's you know, why this is languid. Yeah, and so yeah. if they're starting to feel flooded, if they're starting to feel that flashback, if they're starting to feel like things are out of control, then I want to give them a tool that can work right away right. to help them get a hold of them in between. Now, I've taught them the butterfly hugs, but sometimes that just doesn't seem, and I think it's because it's only one modality. It's the voice, the touch, it's the kinesthetic. Mm -hmm. But here you have visual, you have tactile, you have kinesthetic, yeah. you have almost everything except the auditory. And by the way, you can add, you can, for a recent client, I told them, I want you to do this, and there's a program um, my interns are, a are familiar with called Relax Med Melodies, which has... Um, oh, yeah. By oral um, stimulation, mm -hmm. and and so I said, put on your relaxed melodies, which is sort of a, a just sort of a meandering tune, right? It's got the by oral um, stimulation, the uh, and 
which can bring a relaxation response anyway, but that takes care of the auditory. This takes care of everything else, and they can totally zone out, and I, I prescribed it to help somebody with sleep. Just so you know, someone's already it. doing that with my plate. They have their bilateral for EMDR. They're working on their alcoholism. And so this woman will trace and say, alcohol makes me sick, sick to my stomach. It's turpentine. I can't stand it. The bilateral music is playing. And sure enough, now she's conditioned herself. She'll go into the supermarket, get anywhere near the alcohol section, and it makes her sick to her stomach. And I do have a friend of mine who's an incredibly talented composer who would like to do a complete suite of music in the bilateral shifting oh. of the modulation to go with every single plate. We just quite, I want to do iPad and touchpad apps too. Oh, what a great idea. We just yeah. need a little capital oh, into the company. Cool. <laughs> and that's what I'm working I, on right now. I have now. a question about this. Are mm -hmm. there times where you would have them trace the large? By the way, use your center finger. Feel that nice ergonomic. Uh -huh. Feel that relaxation in the shoulder hit almost immediately. There we go. Are there times though? <laughs> your voice just dropped the modulation okay. to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. um, when, when they're having a real trouble getting into it, go for the simplicity. Just start on that center line nice and round and round uh, and have them switch hands especially because that will take the brain out of this, okay, I can't let go, I have to control the universe into that, okay, I'm going to relax and mellow out a little bit. Yes. So is the recommendation for it, should we start to use something like this to... to train them in session to walk them through it in session, use it with them a couple of times in session, and then have them purchase it to use outside of the session? You can. Or the times where they, where they are having. But to speak to your question, there are three ways I like to suggest them being used in therapy. One, to baseline a patient when they come in. They've got the weight of the world on their outside, on their mind, right? Just let them trace for two minutes. They'll go right into a quietus. Two, for guided visualization, as I recommended. At the end of the session, oftentimes, you know, you have this difficulty of, of maybe a couple getting into an argument right. right at the end of the session, or somebody disclosing something very upsetting right exactly. at the end, and you're trying to bring them down to get them out the door, your next client's sitting in the waiting room, and, and, and there's going to be a way to kind of bring people down. And, and if and I can and offer an, an adjunct to that, or when a trauma bubbles up. What you described is that timeout. Okay, timeout, huh? Okay, timeout to get them out the door or timeout yeah. from their trauma moment. Yes, that's the third way. It's it's to manage when that dynamic starts yeah, to get out of control. Right. That's an excellent way. And people, uh, yes, to manage es escalation. Um, and people will often say, how long should I do this? My favorite response is until you don't want to release the flying monkeys and destroy the office. And the diversion is until you don't want to release the killer robots and destroy the office. But what I've been doing is I've been letting people experiment in the session. Yes. And like I said, just spontaneously, right. they've said, where can I get one of these? I'd really yeah. like to use it at home. Yeah. I show people and two things. Trace with one hand, trace with the other hand. Everything else is completely up to your discretion. But I'm going, to be, I'm going to be using it with my EMDR clients who have a hard time keeping it together between sessions and, and really recommending it and letting them and do a visualization with them, with my voice, that they can now associate, as you said, the training in the office with the visualization. May I walk you through a two-minute meditation that I do with uh, yes. high stress? And yes, I'll drop my voice into that calm modulation as well, and I'll have them trace, and I'll say, okay, one shoulder, just relax one shoulder, then the back of the neck, then your other shoulder. Lower back is strong, very supportive. Sides are strong, core is strong, because when the core feels strong, the body feels sound. Imagine a world of waterfalls all around, rushing, roaring ones, tiny little rivulets off the rocks. The stress comes at you, anxiety tries to attack, it's caught in the water, washed away, washed behind. Another trigger, another stressor can't get you, washed away, washed behind. Body is strong and sound. Shoulders are even, breathing is deep. Lift a hand off the plate, take a big breath. And then just place your hand on the plate. Very simple biofeedback, visualization, biofeedback, big breath. And I've gotten a lot of people, just the tears start flowing. Let them leach out that poison and then back to this with, you are so strong, you are so awesome. 
Wonder Woman's got nothing on you, or Iron Man would envy your armor, I would say to a veteran. This is green zone. So you let them leech that out, then you build them back up to strength and safety, and I send them out just calm as you please. It's just such a simple concept. Have the patient trace with one hand, have the patient trace with the other hand. That's really the only thing going on here. And then apply it as you see fit with some very basic, you know, open flowing designs are more relaxing, tight designs are more engaging. Let the patient figure out where they want to go. As I said, my sister works with challenged children and she'll just put all the plates down and the kids will pick up. That's why I just spread them all out. I didn't say, you do this one, you do this one. You, I, I let you find out where you want to go. When I'm selling to therapists, I'll always say at least one open flowing design, at least one and then maybe a medium, or if you have the budget for three, uh, one of each category. Um, and um, it's, just, it's, it's just simple. That, my friends, is Celtic art therapy. Awesome. Or Celtic art tracing therapy. <laughs> there are three types of designs, open and flowing, medium complexity, tight and complex. And what is this considered? My trinity, one of my go-tos for anxiety. My trinity and my curls. But minute? Medium, open? No, very open, very this is flowing. Very, open. Oh, okay. very mm -hmm. open, very, very flowing. Oh, and another fun one hanging on. Swords. Take a look quick, I think. Don't leave back. Swords. Oh, wow. Swords. Highly swords intelligent. Swords are awesome. Highly, in oh, I was thinking the 12 swords of Camelot and Merlin's wizard fire was the knot. That's this one here. Oh, highly intelligent, highly creative boys are usually the ones that like to trace that. Don't choose that. And no. another design, and this comes in a green also, is my burst. Ooh, I this like has that one. it has little tiny bits and then flow, little tiny bits and then flow, a very uneven tempo. And because of that, it's very intriguing. I like that one. That one's, yeah, that one's, been, a, that one's been an interesting addition to the collection. And I've got a couple more ideas in mind for new pieces. I would I would be a very happy camper if I could find a business partner to begin working all the nuts and bolts. I'll just sit and design more of this stuff, you know. And that's why I still like Ren Fairs. They're my test kitchens. When I come out with a new design, I've watched what type of mentality is attracted to it. Uh -huh. I mean, I just finished the Star of David. I have yet to put it into um, uh, practice. Of course, mostly Jewish people are attracted to it because of the symbolism. We're having fun. Say, come on over and have a high time with us. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's the symbol in that's the, the middle. Symbol. Here, go ahead high. and hold it up to the camera. It's, it's the high, high in the center. It's the high <laughs> is the Hebrew word for life. Absolutely. And it has the high. And you explained something about this, about the 12 candles. 18. 18 candles, because that's right. Because, of course, high is the, is the numerical value of 18. Right. And... Um, so we have 18 candles on the outside. And then a flowing, gentle design around the outside. So I was thinking the flames of life feed into the wings of God, and then they all the twist around the high because that's what life is, twisting lines. Yeah. I have uh, oh, 13 yes. base designs now, and some of them come in different colors. There are a total of 28 plates in the collection. 28 plates in the collection. And plates. how much are they? They are $29.95 on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And um, when I'm selling one-on-one -on -one at a show, I, I will discount that to 25 and, uh, you know, sometimes if people are absolutely desperate, I have to have this, but all I have is 15, I've got panic attacks and I can't turn that away. Do you have any bulk <laughs> discounts possible for therapists? So like I certainly if we do. Wanted to uh, I certainly do. If you buy six or more, they're 20 each. If you buy a dozen or more, that's my wholesale pricing of 15 each. And uh, is there a monograph or anything? Have you written this down anywhere for therapists to kind of guide us in using this? Mostly on my website is all the observations and general guidelines. I haven't sat down and written, here, this is what I suggest, or I haven't duplicated the information that you've just recorded in a written sense. Have you found just the differences in, because this is tracing them. Mm -hmm. um, but for example, myself, I'll find myself doodling a mm -hmm. lot of loops and lines. Right. And on occasion, maybe two, maybe two or three times, I've actually tried doing it with my non-dominant hand. Um, but you find, I mean, it, it's kind of like that simple, I'll just get lost in it. And it's soothing to me, just myself. A lot of people compare this with doodling. It's and one so, of my most common comparisons. Yeah. When you're doodling, though, you're still making a decision. You're yeah. still lightly deciding where you want to go. Here you are. You've surrendered all decision-making capability. That's essential to moving the brain into that light hypnosis. There's no 
way you're deciding this. And when you see people, if they're on a type design and they can't figure out where it's going to go and they're sort of jumpy, they're not seeing it. Put them on something more flowing. So, and if they still don't see it, put it on something even more flowing. You'll notice, once that hand glides, they're there. Once that hand starts gliding, that's what you're looking well, for. Well, and I had a question about that because I noticed um, some people in my And for office, those in the video who are really curious, yes, it's a chopstick. <laughs> so what I noticed is that some people would hold it really tight like this. Mm -hmm. and, and I gave them the instruction, I stopped them, and I gave them instruction to hold it lightly. Mm -hmm. Was that correct? Yes. Okay, because I did. Because they're then, tensing up their whole. I actually had also, one person. They'll go like right here on the on the very and they'll do this. Oh. Okay. Hold it in the middle. When you move it to the middle, there's not as much weight. It's a muscle mechanic. Thing. Right. It's balanced. Yep. Yeah. It's balanced. Well, and I found. And likewise, I, when they're way up here, they don't have the control over it. And they don't quite get it. Right. Midway is very nice. I think that helped with it because I was a little tight, starting with my right hand. When I switched to the left. That's when I notice just that loosening, and then when I switch back to my right, it it stayed. What you had said stayed in just like exactly. stayed in that relaxed spot. That, that quietus yeah. carries over, and part with, of that was okay. I have it in my right hand. Why am I doing this? What's supposed mm -hmm. to be happening? Is there a magic thing here? I'm analyzing, analyzing, analyzing. Switch hands. What? <laughs> There's always that dead pan pause. What? You want me? Are you serious? You? I I I can't. Uh, brain is going like to, to, to say what okay I'll trust you whoa I can hey what do you mean hey I can I can't do anything with this hand this is so classic but you've just absolutely taken all that analysis out of the equation so I had one person <laughs> who was having a hard time I mean they were clutching it like this their tongue was out <laughs> you know, and and they and again noticing they were missing curls, they were mm -hmm. missing some, and they would switch to a different. What does that mean? The design's a little too tight. Uh, for in, them. in my opinion, the design's a little too tight. For them. Over, yeah, for them, put them on a, a more flowing design. It's easier to see, and also switch hands because that's what I had them do. Yeah, and, and they did better on their non-dominant yeah. hand. Bingo. And everyone says, why can I do this easier with my off hand? Uh huh because you're not overthinking it, is always my response. Well, thank Dominant you. hand, they think, off hand. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Yeah, thank, thank you. you guys wow, enjoy that? That's awesome, yeah. yeah. Beautiful work.